so that by choosing to prioritize funding their education without debt, we're ultimately empowering our children to pursue careers that they're truly passionate about. We're enabling them to innovate and to lead without the heavy burden of financial constraints. Making a generational impact starts with one, one person, one family, one community. And so the Gen 1 Legacy is my attempt to help first-gen tech professionals like you get your financial house in order so you can live your legacy. Choosing to go to college was one of the best investment decisions I've ever made. Doing so not only opened doors for me, it also taught me how to become a lifelong learner. Even so, my post-secondary education journey wasn't so smooth from the start. You see, during my first two years in college, I was lost in this new world of higher learning. And so I found myself barely scraping by with a 2.0 GPA because I didn't have anyone to show me the ropes. But during my junior year, I settled into my chosen business major and then everything seemed to change. You know, school wasn't about memorizing facts anymore. No, it quickly became about understanding and applying the knowledge that I was learning. And so for the first time, I saw the true power of education. I saw how I could apply what I'd learned at night school to my job in the morning, which allowed me to make incremental strides in my career. So then with this newfound motivation, by the time I finished grad school, I made the dean's list and graduated with honors. Quite the turnaround, right? Well, it certainly was, but here's the kicker. Because I'm a first-gen Romanian-American, my family wasn't familiar with the college system and we didn't know how to prepare and to save for it. So then, despite my academic success, when it was all said and done, I was left with a mountain of student loan debt. Now, if you're a first-gen professional, then there's a good chance that you're starting to see your story in my story as well. Maybe you've struggled too, or perhaps you've wondered if traditional college is even worth saving for in this world ripe with self-learning opportunities. Now, whatever your position may be, deep down, we all know how education can unlock incredible opportunities when applied in the right settings. You know, when it comes down to it, most parents want to give their kids a head start in life. And so I know that if I'm serious about helping my kids get a leg up when it comes to their learning goals, then I need to help them finance their schooling without it becoming a burden to their future. Indeed, if you're anything like me, then you'll likely want to consider options beyond paying cash out of pocket and begin funding a college savings plan like a 529 sooner rather than later. Because if you don't, your kids could be stuck making choices centered around getting out of debt instead of pursuing their life's purpose. Now, as a parent, you likely don't need me to tell you how the cost of education is rising at a rapid clip. And the trouble is that many high-earning parents believe that they can fund college expenses with cash, so they do little today to prepare for those expenses coming down the pike 10 or 15 years from now. But here's the thing. What you might believe is a manageable cash expense today could end up becoming an unruly cash burden down the road. How so? Well, consider this. The average cost of tuition at a public university went from about $1,200 per year in 1984 to over $9,000 by 2020, according to the Education Data Project. Now, that's a growth rate of around 6% a year at a time when inflation averaged around 2% annually. But the thing is that that $9,000 figure is likely influenced by more affordable costs of education by kids going to community college instead of going to public or private universities. That's because the cost of attending a public university like the University of Pittsburgh currently runs around $22,000 per year. And given the current growth rate of college expenses, that figure will likely double to over $50,000 in 15 years. At the same time, if you're planning to send your kids to private school, then the situation there is just as dour. For example, in 1984, the cost to send your kid to private university was about $14,000 per year in today's dollars. That's adjusted for inflation. But this figure from 1984 to 2020 has risen to $33,000 per year just for tuition. And so by 2035, what do you think this expense could look like? Well, assuming that costs continue to rise at historic rates, then this expense could easily average at least $80,000 per year 15 years from now. So then either way you slice it, the cost of educating our children is on the rise. And so while most parents have good intentions and want the best for their children, the reality of a child working their way through college or having parents who are willing to pay for these expenses cash out of pocket could become a distant memory for many of us. Indeed, the truth is that more and more students today are borrowing money to pay for their schooling needs. In fact, based on the most recently available data, student loan debt nationally has risen from around $480 billion in 2006 to nearly $1.8 trillion in 2024. Now, these are some rather large numbers that are hard for me even sometimes to wrap my brain around, so let's look at it a different way. Let's look at these figures and divide them up by the working age population in the United States. And when we do this, we see that student loan debt here in the United States rises from $30,300 in 2006 for each working age adult to nearly $11,000 per working age adult in 2024. So from this perspective, you can easily see how in a short period of time, the cost of higher education is soaring and student loan debt has 
unmistakably become a national crisis. But you know, ultimately, we're not just talking about numbers on a page, are we? We're talking about a barrier that can delay your and my child's entry into financial independence. We're talking about obstacles that can limit their career choices and even in extreme cases, affect their mental health. So then for you parents out there, the question isn't just about whether to support your child's education. It's also about how to do so in a way that doesn't saddle your kids with decades of debt, right? It's about being prepared so your kids can be spared. Now, the bigger problem here when you're not prepared to deal with the higher learning expenses is that your kids could end up not only loaded up with debt, but also borrowing more money than they need. Indeed, according to a study published by the think tank New America, college students aren't just borrowing more money, they're borrowing above and beyond their need simply to live a lavish lifestyle. Now, it's worth noting that this report is based on the latest available data going back to 2017 and utilizes data from students attending community college. Nevertheless, there's a good chance that much of the report's findings can be applied to a wide variety of higher learning institutions as well. And so what did the study find? Well, the study showed a couple of things. First, it showed that the average annual cost of tuition at community colleges was $3,500 in 2017. But here's where things start to get interesting. The report showed that the total cost of education, that is the total amount of money that includes tuition and not tuition expenses reported by these students was $17,500. So can you believe it? We go from $3,500 to $17,500. So then only a fraction of student loan borrowing went to paying for tuition expenses. But can I tell you something? This isn't a surprise, is it? You know, I'll admit that I was one of those borrowers who foolishly followed this path. In fact, I clearly remember that during grad school, I took out private student loans to pay for tuition expenses and to supplement my lifestyle. And so what did I end up buying? I bought windows for my new home. But you know, back then I would convinced myself that I was going to pay these loans off quickly. And even though I knew the perils of taking on too much debt, I would convinced myself that my future earnings would be enough to make up for my higher debt load. So then when I went to apply for these loans through my school's finance department, I got to choose a specific dollar amount that I need to borrow for the semester. And you know what I did? I borrowed the maximum amount that my lender would allow me to borrow for that semester. For me, it was like getting free money. I even tricked myself into believing how I could use my tuition reimbursement from work to pay back my debt. But you know what happened? You guessed it. I put off paying back my debt for longer than necessary, and it cost me in terms of opportunities later on in my career. You see, not accounting for higher education expenses isn't just a matter of covering the cost of rising tuition. It's also about opening the door for your kids to unchecked borrowing that has the potential to sink their financial and life opportunities. You know, the truth is that many parents grapple with the fear and the guilt of leaving their children to fend for themselves in an increasingly complex world. And this concern is especially relevant to first-gen professionals like you and me who might have navigated these waters alone and know the full weight of taking on debt to pay for school. So then saving for college isn't so much about the money, it's about managing the worries of our children struggling through the same financial hardships that we did. It's about avoiding the emotional and psychological toll of having to figure out how much to borrow and then dealing with the aftermath of borrowing too much that can affect both us as parents parents and our children. It's about being prepared so our children can be spared. So then with college expenses going up at a rapid clip, how can we prevent our children from becoming the next statistic when it comes to borrowing to pay for college? Well, while the figures that we've discussed here today might seem overwhelming, especially if you have multiple children in your household, the good news is that there's some proactive steps that you can take today, like establishing a 529 savings plan so you can avoid the future regret. And you know, what better day than today on May 29th to safeguard your children's financial future, right? Indeed, the truth is, that investing in a 529 college savings plan isn't just about saving for college. It's about giving your children the freedom to pursue their education journey and their life's purpose without the shadow of debt hanging over them. In fact, a 529 plan offers tax advantages, it offers flexibility, and it also offers control that can turn your fears today into the foundation of support for your child's tomorrow. But more importantly, it's a simple way to help you get started down the path of preparing your child for college. All right, so how do you get started? Well, here are a few things I've done to help prepare my children for success success and enable them to avoid the burden of student loan debt. So to start, you'll want to figure out how much you'll need to have saved in 10, 15, or 20 years down the road to pay for your kids' education needs. That's because understanding the exact amount that you need to have saved for your child's education sets a clear financial target and makes the daunting task of savings both manageable and measurable. In fact, by knowing how much you'll likely need to save for the future, you can tailor your savings and investment strategies to meet your goals without overextending your family or risking your child's future by taking on unnecessary student loan debt. So then take the time to ask yourself, you know, what school would my child likely attend? How many years do we have to save for it? And what resources can we allocate to the savings goal? Then begin researching the current costs associated with the colleges or education programs that you're considering. And you could do this by using
using online calendars or financial planning software specifically designed for education savings to help estimate the total amount that you need to save while accounting for inflation and other rising costs. The next thing that you'll want to consider when it comes to funding the ideal amount of future college expenses without going into debt is to select the right vehicle for your savings. Now, this is where choosing a 529 savings plan can come into play. Now, you should know that you're not limited to a 529 plan. In fact, you have many options out there like an education trust, a Coverdell, or custodial accounts like Upmas and Ugmas in which to save for college expenses. Either way, selecting the right savings vehicle is not just about putting money aside, it's about choosing an approach that aligns with your financial situation, your goals, and your tax situation. Ultimately, however, it's about understanding and choosing a vehicle that's ideal for you to ensure that every dollar saved works as hard as possible towards meeting your education funding goals. So then to this end, ask yourself, you know, what are my primary objectives for saving for my child's education? Is it flexibility in the use of my funds, tax savings, or maintaining control? Then with your goals in mind, take the time to research and compare these options. That's because by understanding the nuance of each option, like the tax advantages of a 529 plan or the expansive eligibility of Coverdell accounts or the flexible nature of UTMAs and education trusts, you'll be able to ensure that every dollar you save is working tirelessly towards your future future funding goals. Finally, if you want to avoid the regret of not being able to fund your child's education without taking on debt, then you'll likely want to get started sooner rather than later. Certainly, the sooner you start putting money aside, the more likely you'll benefit from the power of compounding. In fact, each day you delay is potential growth that's lost that could have contributed to your child's education savings. At the same time, by starting now, you'll also reduce the financial stress associated with setting aside enough money while giving yourself a longer-term horizon to manage any market fluctuations or changes in education plans that may come your way. That's why it's crucial to ask yourself, can I start making regular monthly contributions without significantly impacting my current financial lifestyle? Now, you'd be surprised at how the sooner you get started, the less of a burden saving for college can actually be. That's because once you have your savings account in place, you'll likely be best served by setting up an automatic contributions from your bank account. And so even the small amounts add up over time and ultimately leads you to success. Either way, as I reflect on my own education journey, having been burdened with debt despite my academic success, I realized how different my story could have been had someone told me what I was getting myself into by taking on student loan debt. So then my wish for you first-gen parents out there is to not let the burden of student loans limit your child's potential. You know, you have the power to shape a future where your kids can pursue their dreams without the burden of debt. So go out there and get started by setting clear learning goals, choosing the right savings vehicles, and getting started with that initial contribution. Because if you don't, if you delay for just one more day, you could be setting your child up for more than a missed opportunity. You could be fundamentally altering their future. Indeed, without the foresight to avoid student loan debt, your child could face decades of financial strain. You know, they could become another statistic and face a burden that forces them to make life choices based on a financial necessity rather than their passion or their ambitions. They could be stuck settling for a job or delaying major life milestones like buying a home or starting a family because they've got all this student loan debt to pay off. But you know, it doesn't have to be this way. I mean, imagine a future where your and my kids can step into adulthood equipped and not encumbered. Imagine a future where the decisions that you and I make today, like getting started with college savings, lays down a path of opportunity and not obstacles. So then by choosing to prioritize funding their education without debt, we're ultimately empowering our children to pursue careers that they're truly passionate about. We're enabling them to innovate and to lead without the heavy burden of financial constraints. And in a way, we're likely setting the stage to create the ripple effects of success that enriches our families, lifts up our community, and takes us all one step closer to becoming the masters of our own financial independence journey. To learn more about today's topic, you can visit the episodes page at LegacyGen1.com. And if you can find one person in your life who would benefit from today's message, please share this episode with them. But until next time, I'm Peter Donisanu, wishing you and yours abundant health and prosperity. The Gen 1 Legacy Podcast is brought to you by Franklin Madison Private Wealth. Franklin Madison Private Wealth is a registered investment advisor firm with its registration and principal place of business in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Registration of an investment advisor does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The information shared today is not intended to be personal, legal, investment, or tax advice, or solicitation to buy or sell any security, or engage in a particular investment strategy. The commentary and forecasts are limited to the dissemination of and general information pertaining to Franklin Madison Private Wealth's investment advisory services and are based on economic and market conditions that are subject to change without notice. For additional information about Franklin Madison Private Wealth, including fees and services, please contact Franklin Madison Private Wealth or refer to the Investment Advisor Public Disclosures.